Horrid Henry Gets Rich Quick by Francesca Simon Narrated by Shamira May Horrid Henry loved money. He loved counting money. He loved holding money. There was only one problem. Horrid Henry never had any money. He sat on his bedroom floor and rattled his empty skeleton bank. How his mean parents expected him to get by on 50p a week pocket money, he would never know. It was so unfair. Why should they have all the money when there were so many things he needed? Comic books, Whopper chocolate bars, a new football, more nights for his castle. Horrid Henry looked around his room, scowling. True, his shelves were filled with toys, but nothing he still wanted to play with. Mum! screamed Henry. Stop shouting, Henry! shouted his mum. If you have something to say, come downstairs and say it. I need more pocket money, said Henry. Ralph gets a pound a week. Different children get different amounts, said mum. I think 50p a week is perfectly adequate. Well, I don't. I'm very happy with my pocket money, mum, said Perfect Peter. I always save loads from my 30p. After all, if you look after the pennies, the pounds will look after themselves. Quite right, Peter, said Mum, smiling. Henry walked slowly past Peter. When Mum wasn't looking, he reached out and grabbed him. He was a giant crab, crushing a prawn in its claws. Ow! wailed Peter. Henry pinched me! Did not, said Henry. No pocket money for a week. Henry, said Mum, that's not fair! howled Henry. I need money. He'll just have to save more, said Mum. No, shouted Henry. He hated saving money. Then you'll have to find a way to earn some. Earn? Earn money? Suddenly Henry had a brilliant, fantastic, fascinating idea. Mum, can I set up a stall and sell some stuff I don't want? Like what? said Mum. You know, old toys, comics, games, things I don't use anymore, said Henry. Mum hesitated for a moment. She couldn't think of anything wrong with selling off a lot old junk. All right, said Mum. Can I help Henry, said Peter. No way, said Henry. Oh, please, stop being horrid, Henry, and let Peter help you, said Mum. Or no stall. Okay, said Henry, scowling. You can make the four sale signs. Horrid Henry ran to his bedroom and piled his unwanted jump jumble into a box. He cleared the shelves of books, his wardrobes of party clothes and his toy box of puzzles with pieces missing. Then Horrid Henry paused. To make big money he definitely needed a few more valuable items. Now where could he find some? Henry crept into Peter's room. He could sell Peter's stamp collection or his nature kit. Nah, thought Henry, no one would want that boring stuff. Then Henry glanced inside Mum and Dad's room. It was packed with rich pickings. Henry sauntered over to Mum's dressing table, looking at all the perfume, thought Henry. He wouldn't miss one small bottle. He chose the large crystal bottle with a swan-shaped stopper and packed it into the box. Now, what other jumble could he find? Aha! There was Dad's tennis racket. Dad never played tennis. That racket was just laying on the floor collecting dust when it could have a much better home. Perfect, thought Henry, adding the racket to his collection. Then he staggered out to the pavement to set up the display. Horrid Henry surveyed his stall. It was piled high with bargains. He was sure he'd make a fortune. But Henry said Peter, looking up from the drawing, a sign. That's Dad's tennis racket. Are you sure he wants you to sell it? Of course I'm sure. Stupid, snapped Henry. If only he could get rid of his horrible brother. Wouldn't life be perfect? Then horrid Henry looked at Peter. Was it the Romans did with the leftover captives? Hmm, he thought. He looked again. Hmm. Peter said Henry sweetly. How would you like to earn some money? Oh yes, said Peter. How? 
Ah, we could sell you as a valet. Perfect, Peter thought for a moment. How much would I get? Ten p, said Henry. Wow, that means I will have six pound forty seven in my piggy bank. Can I wear a for sale sign? Certainly, said Horrid Henry. He scram scribbled for sale five pound, then placed a sign around Peter's neck. Now look smart, said Henry. I see some customers walking past. What's going on? said Moody Margaret. Yeah, Henry, what are you doing? said Sour Susan. I'm having a jumble sale, said Henry. Lots of bargains. All the money raised goes to a very good cause. What's that? said Susan. Children in need, said Henry. I'm a child and I'm certainly in need, so that's true, he thought. Moody Margaret picked up a punctured football. Bargain? This is this lot's a lot of junk. No, it isn't. Look, puzzles, book, perfumes, stuffed toys and, v and a valet. Moody Margaret looked up. I could use a good servant, said Margaret. I'll give you 25p for him. 25p for an excellent valet. He's worth at least pound fifty. Make a muscle valet, said Moody Margaret. Perfect pizza made a muscle. Hmm, said Margaret. 50p, final offer. Done, Horace said Horrid Henry. Why had he never thought of selling pizza before? How can I get 50p when I cost... 10p. Shopkeeper's expenses, said Henry. Now run along with your new owner. Business was brisk. Rude Ralph brought some football cards. Sour Susan brought the best bear and mum's perfume. Beefy Bar boy t bought a racing car with three wheels. Then a aerobic owl jogged by. Cool racket, he said, picking up Dad's new racket and giving it a few strings. How much? Ten quid, said Henry. I'll give you two pounds said Al. Two pound? That was more money than Henry had ever made in his life. He was rich. Done, said Henry. Horry Henry sat in the sitting room, happily glazing at his stacks of money. Three pound twelve. Boy, would he buy a lot of chocolate. Mum came into the room. Henry, have you seen my new perfume? You know, the one with the swan on top. No, said Henry. Yikes, he never thought she would notice. And where's Peter? said Mum. I thought he was playing with you. He's gone, said Henry. Mum stared at him. What do you mean? Gone. Gone, said Henry, popping a crisp into his mouth. I sold him. You did what? whispered Mum. Her face went pale. You said I could sell anything I don't want. And I certainly didn't want Peter, so I sold him to Margaret. Mum's jaw dropped. You go straight over to Margaret's and buy him back, screamed Mum. You horrid boy, selling your own brother. But I don't want him back, said Henry. No ifs or buts, Henry, screeched Mum. You just get your brother back. That's all I'm worried about. Can't afford him, said Henry. If you want him back, you should pay for him. Henry, bowed Mum. All right, grumbled Henry, getting to his feet. He sighed. What a waste of good money, he thought climbing over the wall to Margaret's garden. Margaret was lying on the paddling pool. Violet, she ordered, I'm hot, fan me. Perfect Peter came out of the house carrying a large fan. Faster, Violet, demanded Margaret. Slower, Violet, said Margaret. Violet, a cool drink can make it snappy, ordered Margaret. Horrid Henry followed Peter. Henry, squeaked Peter, have you come to rescue me? No, said Henry. Please, I'll do anything, you can have the 10p. The cash register in Henry's head started to whirl. Not enough, said Henry. I'll give you 50p, I'll give you a pound, I'll give you two quid, said Peter. She's horrible, she's worse than you. Right, you can stay here forever and ever, said Henry. Sorry, Henry, said Perfect Peter. You're the best brother in the world. I'll give you all the money. Hold Henry looked as if he were considering this offer. All right, wait here. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Henry. Where's my drink? said Margaret. My mum says I have to get Peter back. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I don't want to sell him. I've paid good money for him. Henry hoped he'd forgotten that. OK, here's that 50p. Moody Margaret leaped back and closed his eyes. I want ten quid now. He's worth ten quid. He's got training. Slowly, Henry stuck his back into his pocket. 75p, that's my final offer. Margaret knew this was a good deal when she was offered one. Okay, give me my money. 
Reluctantly, Henry paid her, but that still leaves over £2. Henry, so I'm well ahead. Then he went to fetch Peter. You cost me £6. Thank you, Henry, said Peter. I'll pay you as soon as I get home. Yippee, thought horrid Henry. I'm super rich. The world is mine. Clink, clank, clink, went Henry's heavy pockets as Henry did his money dance. Clink, clank, clink. I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm richy, richy, rich, as rich I can be, sang Henry. Spend, 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 would his motto now from me. Hello, everybody, called Dad, coming through the front door. What a lovely afternoon. Anyone for tennis? The end.